Instagram Witchy Mama. This is Ivani from Ecstatic Earth Arts, and I am here live today. I am going to be talking about uh, the goddess Hecate, which is a kind of big fan favorite, so I'm pretty excited about it. I hope a lot of people join us to chat today. I am just in the midst of doing that thing that I always do, where I pull up a second window. Here we go. So I can see all the comments on Facebook in particular because Facebook is weird. So that said, um, I, I said today that in my pre-show I was going to show you some of my Hecate goodies and I'm going to show them again at the end um, just because it makes sense. You know, some people join me early, some people join me late so everybody gets to see it all at once. Kind of um, re reaching around to the end of Samhain season and uh, my Samhain collection which means that a lot of these things are going to be kind of going away really soon. So I just wanted to make sure that whoever is interested in them gets a chance to see them um, maybe if they didn't already. Um, and I know that I have a slightly different backdrop behind me today, and I usually have just the solid wall. I'm actually in the same room, facing the opposite direction, and instead of sitting crisscross applesauce on my bed and um, making my back kill, I am sitting on the opposite side. Hey, Legion A16, going to be talking about the Goddess Hecate. Today I was just telling everyone about how I'm in a slightly different place today, but I'm sitting in an actual chair, which is a lot nicer on my back. Um, and I am already liking better, even though the background is a little bit busier. But this is actually my altar, one of the alt my altars behind me. And I know that on uh, Facebook they can see it. But over here I actually have a Hecate statue way over there. In the corner, so. Proof! Not that anybody needed it, but there she is. So, let me get this recentered. So now while we wait for more folks to show up, I figured I would show off some of my Hecate collection that I have on sale available on my website at this exact moment in time. Legion says, as an LMT, I'm glad your back is happy. You know what? Me too, because I stand all day at work and it is brutal trying to sit hunched over on my bed just to get everything set up the right way because I have Facebook and Instagram streaming on two different devices kind of like on top of each other. So this is a lot better, uh, a, a, a successful experiment, I think. Uh, but real quick, so talk about my um, Hecate. So first thing I want to show off is this necklace. Oh, she's backwards. There we go. So this is a woven Hecate ne necklace. There are both uh, versions like this that have the black cord on our website and versions that have the red cord. Um, so obviously this focal piece here is this really beautiful um, skeleton key that's made to look sort of antiqued. Um, you know, and both the skull and the key in general are symbols of Hecate. Um, the key is a symbol of Hecate because she's believed to be the guardian of the liminal spaces um, between the living and the world of the dead. Um, so the key is sort of the symbol of having that door, or the, the ability to open and close that door at will. Um, and then the these beads here, these larger beads in particular, are lava stone. Lava stone is wonderful because you can put oils in them to diffuse, um, so it'll make it smell beautiful and wonderful for a long, long time to come. Uh, for those that order this, I will probably diffuse either straight up cypress is what I put on my website, but I have an actual Hecatite oil blend that I might use um, instead. So, you know, let me know what you think people would be more likely to like. Because, um, you know, I like hearing what you all think. Um, and then, so in between each of these beads here, there's actually 13 knots. 13 is, symb is symbolic of the number of moon cycles we have in the year. Um, and then here we have the sort of twisty pattern instead of the straight pattern, you know, it sort of resembles a DNA helix if you could see it up close. So the idea of the transformation of death into life. Um, so that is my Hecate necklace. Um, uh, like I said, I've got red and I have black. Um, and I like the black because it represents the idea of death and transformation. And I like the red because it represents fire. Uh, which is another thing that represents transformation, so I thought they were all accurate. If you're here watching me, um, if you could throw a hashtag live into the comments, hashtag replay if you're watching on a replay, that'd be wonderful. It will help other people find us and more people could join in. As a quick reminder, this is not the Avani show. Um, this is me trying to tell you, share some information with you guys I think you guys would really like. If you have any questions, any comments, anything that you want to say or want to ask, please throw it out there. I would love to hear from you, and I always respond to comments when I see them come through. Um, I will show you, I was going to do, show you all my things, but, um, we are, it's actually been like four minutes already talking about just one necklace and the chair I'm <laughs> sitting on, which is ridiculous. Um, but let me show you another thing. This is another thing that I haven't showed in any other live streams yet. So this is actually a piece of my artwork made into a die cut sticker. Um, I call this, this, um, uh, particular design Hecate's Mark. Um, so we have the pentacle on the bottom, the two daggers, um, 
The reason why Hecate is associated with daggers is because of her status actually as a midwife, where um, it was believed that she would use the knife to sever the umbilical cord upon uh, birth. So again, you see symbolism regarding the transition from death to life and life to death and so on and so forth. And then we have the moons here to represent her status as a moon goddess. And then again, fire and smoke. Um, so you can, you can see this here is a sticker. I'll kind of partially peel it here so you can see where the edges are because uh, the black is actually not quite the edge. So there is a little bit of a white border all the way around. Um, these are great. You can put them on laptops or anywhere where you like to keep your stickers. You can also find this design on a t-shirt. And, um, oh, I just realized I have a second, there's a second sticker somewhere that I might have to go fishing for. But I have another design that's also called the Hand of Hecate, which you can also find in a sticker, um, on my website. And this is also the image that is the, uh, title page of my Sound Ancestor Ritual that is also available on my website right now. But I love this one. I love this, this image so much that I actually made this the back of my business card, current business card design. So, Mark of Hecate, um, stickers, and then other things. So, but now that said, we are six minutes into, um, where I am. I usually like to make the pre-show about five minutes and I don't want to wait too long because then people lose, lose interest and kind of go away. Again, if you're joining me, please throw hashtag live, hashtag replay into the comments, especially if you're on Facebook because Facebook, um, will not show me your names. It will just show me a little number at the top. Like, Hey, there's X number of people here and I really want to say hello. So please say hi if you're here with a hashtag live and I will say hi back. Um, so anyway, let's talk about Hecate because that's what I told you guys came here for today. Uh, so first thing I like to talk about when I do these little um, talks about um, deities is first I like to talk about them sort of in myth, of course, and in, in history, you know, as far as the way that they were worshipped and revered in the past. Because I feel like by looking back at the, at the past, looking at history, looking at mythology, it gives us basically all the clues that we need to, just, to figure out how we can work with things in the modern world. So uh, Hecate is... A really fascinating deity because she is um, even more ancient than a lot of the other deities that many people worship so to speak and work with maybe is a better phrase I know worship is sort of a trigger for some people because it kind of reminds them of Christianity and some people don't like that but um, she has pre-Olympian roots and is considered to actually be a titan she is the daughter of Perseus and Asteria 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 I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation there who were themselves titans. Um, Perseus was the titan of destruction and Aster Asteria, which you might guess by the, the word if you're even remotely familiar with etymology, um, is a goddess of the stars or the goddess of the sky. So the sky goddess. So she's the daughter of a titan of destruction and a titan of the night, the night sky in particular. So, I mean, I feel like that gives you a lot of clues about Hecate in general, even without knowing anything else about her. <laughs> um, so Hecate was said to actually be so powerful that Zeus himself, an Olympian, actually worshipped her, which I think is kind of like amazing because, you know, Zeus sort of represented the shift that religion, mythology, theology, spirituality, whatever word you want to apply here, kind of represents the shift that we made from a matriarchal societies into patriarchal societies where we had these big, big father gods who were sort of the, the big the big guys in charge where as far as, you know, the mythology and the pantheons were concerned. Um, you know, so Zeus, you know, sort of looked at Hecate as being even above him, which is really, I think, amazing. Um, so a, a lot of academic writing and, um, throughout history, of course, we often associate deities with other deities across different cultures because mythology and the archetypes within mythology are so universal across the board that it's, it can be very easy to kind of pick through different pantheons and different cultures and find places where one god can ver is very, very clearly a, I don't want to say duplicate of, but similar version of another. Um, and Hecate, of course, is no different. Um, a few weeks ago, I did Hermes. Hermes has several other kind of um, deities that he's likened to Odin. Toth, um, and probably others that I'm forgetting off the top of my head right now. Hecate is also associated with Isis, um, which is an Egyptian mother goddess, um, Artemis and Diana, which were also Roman. Um, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this one because it's Babylonian and it's not really a pantheon I work with, but Areshkigal, 
Arashkigal, I think that's what it looks like to me, um, are all goddesses that she is also associated with. Um, and a quick note about her associating with Artemis and Diana. Um, there are some systems in which... Um, I'm trying to really remember this correctly. Celine, Diana, and Hecate are actually considered a triple goddess. So Celine is, I believe... The, I think that it's Diana is the maiden goddess, Selene is the mother, and Hecate is the crone. Um, there are other triple goddess kind of s systems where Persephone is the maiden, Demeter is the mother, and Hecate is the crone. But in, in any iteration, generally speaking, Hecate is the crone figure. Although it's kind of interesting because once you start really studying Hecate and looking into her, you find that there are a lot of ways in which she embodies all three aspects of the triple goddess in and of herself. Um, depending on which epithet you're looking at and what um, source you're you're learning and studying from, uh, which I think is just amazing because she's just like this goddess for for all people um, in so many ways. So, as far as um, different ways that we find her in mythology, um, obviously um, last in the last last month and uh, around there I was talking about maybe when we were leading up leading up to the fall equinox I was talking about the myth of Persephone and Demeter and Hecate again um, which is kind of how I, we led into Hecate here is that Demeter at, at Lamas Lunasa and Persephone at Mabin and now that we're in Samhain I'm I'm moving into um, Hecate so I've had this kind of series happening um, unofficially without telling anybody else just kind of that's where I intuitively went with it um, so, so it would be I would be remiss to not talk really quickly about the Eleusinian mysteries, um, without getting into great detail about what those are. Because if you want to learn more, you can go back and listen to my live streams about Persephone and Demeter, um, which if you can't find them here on Instagram, you can find them on my YouTube channel. Um, uh, so in in the in some versions of the story of that kind of led to the Eleusinian mysteries. Um, Hecate, well, one, there's two kind of things that Hecate, roles, I should say, that Hecate plays. One is that she is the person that, um, saw Persephone being abducted and then told Demeter about it when Demeter went searching for her. Um, really quickly in, in the myth, what happens is Persephone, um, Hades falls in love, Persephone makes a deal with Zeus to marry her without Demeter, her mother's knowledge. And Hades goes and abducts her and brings her to Hades. And Demeter has no idea if she is. She's bereft. She goes on this, you know, crazy long expedition to to find her. Um, and there's more, but that's that's the short version you need to know to kind of understand what I'm what I'm talking about. Um, so in addition to told, telling Demeter about Perse Persephone's abduction and who had taken her. Um, and again, if you're here watching me live, throw a hashtag live into the comments, hashtag replay if you're here watching after the fact so I can say hi and see who's here. Um, I would love to say hello. It's what I like to let people, I like I like to have you guys involved. Um, the other thing that Hecate does, but only in some versions of the myth, it depends on where you read. Um, so so how that, that myth ends is that Demeter does finally find Persephone and... Um, they make a deal where Persephone spends half the year in the underworld and half the year in Olympus with her mother, or on Earth with her mother, I should say. Um, and so Hecate becomes that sort of in-between guide, you know, so when Persephone is descending into the underworld, which happens at the fall equinox thereabouts, um, at least as we celebrate it, um, Hecate is the person that leads her from one place to the next. And I assume from the underworld back upwards too, although we don't hear about that as much. You know, we usually associate Hecate as the one bringing people from the light into the dark. Um, but obviously as a goddess of liminal and in-between places, she's got to be doing both because um, both are in those liminal places. Um, let's see, some other miscellaneous myths that Hecate are in, although the Eleusinian mysteries are really big and one of the most well-known. Um, in the War of the Titans... Um, Zeus, uh, I should say, in the War of the Titans, Hecate actually al allied herself with Zeus rather than the Titans, which was really very significant. Hey, Magic Mom 629, we're here talking about Hecate today. Um, right now I'm chatting a little bit about some of the myths that she is in. Um, so, in, in addition to her allying herself with Zeus in the War of the Titans, she's also described as laying with Hermes, 
the god I mentioned him a little while ago. Um, and Hermes is in many circles often. Um, oh, hi Liz. Hi Elizabeth. Um, that's my mother-in-law. She's here watching on Facebook. Hey there. Um, in a lot of myths, um, Hermes is widely regarded as her consort. Um, some people work with her that way now. Some people choose other deities that they feel work better. I'm, I'm kind of in that camp. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. But, you know, your mileage may vary. You do whatever makes you happy if you're working with her, of course. Um, and feel the need to include the kind of the divine masculine to kind of balance it out. Um, and, of course, there's a lot more myths that are related with Hecate in them, but a lot of them relate to how she acquired her various animal companions that she has throughout myth and that are associated with her, such as um, there's a pole cat that's supposed to be hers that she works with a lot, um, a black dog, serpents, so on and so forth. There's lots of different animals. Um, but a lot of the myths that are out there are kind of about that those those associations and how they came to be. Um, and of course, like a lot of um, Greek and Roman deities, he, Hecate has her own special feast days. Um, uh, the most common, her actual feast day, as they, as they call it, Hecate's feast day, is actually August 13th. Um, and it is actually, I believe, still celebrated in Greece, which is kind of neat. Um, I, she is also, I also wrote here, and I'm probably going to butcher this because I don't know ancient or modern Greece, Greek, excuse me, um, but deep, deep non, um, which is the Greek name or word that is applied to the new moon. So the new moon is also considered to be very sacred to Hecate. Again, Hecate is an in-between place. Think about the new moon, dark moon versus new moon as sort of like the in-between moon cycles. You know, so that's part of how she kind of lends herself into that. Again, if you're here on Facebook, Instagram, throw me, throw a hashtag live, hashtag replay into the comments so I can see that you're here. Say hi, because Facebook just shows me a number, not a list of names, and I would love to know who's who's hanging out with us today. Um, of course, oh, oh, um, of course, um, Samhain is also associated with Hecate, again, because Samhain is associated with death. Um, she... There's really nothing in the original mythology and in the Reconstructionist stuff that kind of talks about Samhain. That's a very much more Celtic um, holiday, a North, North, Northern um, European type um, holiday, um, especially like Welsh, um, United Kingdom area, geography area. Um, <laughs> I'm smart. Um, but... But a lot of people in the modern day associate with Hec so associate with Hecate, much like I do. Hey, Mio, me, Mio, we. Anyway, glad that you're here. Um, we're here talking about the goddess Hecate today. Um, and so, in addition to August 13th as Hecate's feast day, uh, deep non or new moon, um, and Samhain, November 16th is another one of the days associated with Hecate. Um, I wasn't too smart. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just got this hat recently. I actually bought it Spirit Halloween. Would you believe I didn't already own me of we? Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Duh. Um, my mother-in-law on Facebook says that our family ritual, which we're going to be doing tomorrow night, is centered on Hecate, which I'm not surprised because I know that Hecate is one of uh, the goddesses that she works with a lot, too. So, And the ritual that I wrote this year um, that's available on, on my website that I'm hoping to do on Sunday on my own um, is also um, very much focused on Hecate, too, as you might imagine, considering my whole collection is centered around her. Um, so, uh, oh, so her feast on November 16th, that's what I was talking about, it generally begins at sunset on that particular day. And the way that most people celebrate is they actually will have a feast um, at Crossroads. Um, and just as a quick note, when people talk about Crossroads, because when I learned this, I was like, mind blown. I had never heard of such a thing before. That a crossroad isn't necessarily like a crossroad that's an X, like we're thinking of it. It's often more like a T. You know, so like technically the end of your driveway is a crossroad. You know, the end of a, the tip, the very starting or ending end of a trailhead is a crossroad. Um, um, and I think that's a valuable piece of information because it makes crossroads a lot easier to, to find if you're looking for them. Um, oh, Mibui says, very cool that I have in-laws that practice. Yes, it is amazingly cool because um, my husband's a witch, my mother-in-law's a witch, my sister-in-law's a witch, and I'm a witch, and my mother-in-law has friends that are witches, and we're just witches, witches everywhere, and it's um, a wonderful, wonderful situation, and um, I'm, I am amazingly lucky. Um, but that said, as far as Hecate goes, um, these holidays that I'm talking about, these are just a couple 
Um, there are many, many, many more. I kind of just tried to focus on the big ones. You know, we only have a little bit of time today. I didn't want to waste too much time talking about that. Um, but if you're planning to work on Hecate, there are a few things that are particularly considered to be sort of her realm of um, energy or words. What do you want to talk? Hey, Avi. Avi is on Facebook. Avi's another person that I've learned a lot about Hecate from. Um, but as far as working with Hecate, Hecate is really great for protection magic. Um, especially, um, she's considered, for household protection in particular, she's long been considered to be a has household goddess. And a lot of the rituals that are, that surround her worship, um, especially in ancient Greece and even in a lot of the modern day practices, um, they are around working with her within the household, household offerings, household protection, all sorts of things like that. Um... And, of course, she's also going to be a protector of young women in particular. Um, I mentioned earlier that although in a lot of triple goddess systems, Hecate is associated with the crone aspect in particular, there are there is evidence across mythology that shows that she very easily can be put into any of those three aspects of the triple goddess, maiden mother or crone. Um, and, as I said, she's associated with Diana and Artemis, which are all, are considered to be a protector of young women. So that means that Hecate, also a protector of young women. So that's where that comes from. Um, also, of course, she's excellent for issues with karmic justice, because she's kind of a badass who doesn't take crap from anybody. Um, so especially when it comes to righteous anger, you know, you know, where someone has done something wrong to you and you're angry because, well, that was wrong on principle, then she's a great goddess to work with to kind of do anything like uh, banishing, binding, return to sender type spells. Hecate is your girl. Uh, and of course she's great for general magic and witchcraft in general, which is super general, I know. But she is literally a goddess of magic and witchcraft. Like, literally. So um, you can call on her for pretty much anything. Um, that's part of what makes her so great. Um, and then, so if you're looking, if you're interested in considering working with Hecate a little bit more, um, here are some things that you might want to include on altars, colors you might want to use, so on and so forth. Um, some symbols that are hers generally, and I showed you this earlier, so this is um, one of my uh, pieces of art. This is a sticker that's on my website. You can also find it on a t-shirt. It's also the cover image of the ritual for Samhain in my collection this year, or yeah, this year. Um, I just want to pull this up so you can see where the casting is again. But, um, so, some of her symbols are, uh, tor oh, these aren't torches, but torches, which is part of why I have the fire in here. Torches are also, they're a symbol of, you know, like, uh, guidance. So, like, showing people where to go, again, as a goddess of the in-between places, bringing people from the land of the dead to the land of living and living to dead, so on and so forth. Um, also daggers, we mentioned that. The moon. Um, and again, if you weren't here to hear what I said about daggers, daggers are associated with Hecate because she's often looked at as a midwife and she used them to sever umbilical cords. Again, talking about her again as a sort of, um, goddess that's the gateway from death to life and life to death. Um, some other things that are associated, oh, crossroads, I mentioned that earlier. She's a goddess of crossroads, so crossroads are very much Hecate's realm. Um, and then some animals that are, she's associated with, I know I mentioned a bunch earlier, but mentioning again. Um, black dogs, polecats, snakes, and wolves are um, big for her. In fact, if you know anything about Hecate and you've ever looked at artwork of her, you'll see that people often include those animals in the artwork, especially the dogs and black dogs. Um, and then, again, for altar building, some other items that you might include in, on an altar for her. Bones! <laughs> skulls! Um, obviously, as a, she's often associated with death as this kind of in-between goddess. Um, so anything, so bones are always symbolic of death and the transformation of death. Um, and one of the things, I, I can't remember where I read this really, really recently, actually, that bones are amazing because even after we die and our flesh, you know, rots away, for lack of a better way of describing it, you know, our bones are the only thing of, of ours that sort of remains behind for a really, really long time. Um, so in a way, in that way, bones kind of symbolize the idea of life overcoming death. The idea of the immortality of the soul because those bones persist even when the rest of the body is gone. Just like our spirit does, so to speak. Um, and then some other things, some plants that are associated with Hecate. Um, asphodel, which is also known as um, monk's hood or wolf's bane. Um, it is very, very, well, let me, let me, 
I'll get to there in a second. I was going to make a comment, but let me list the rest of these first because this applies to all of them. Um, so Monk's Hood, Asphodel, Slash, uh, Wolfsbane, um, Foxglove, Datura, or also called Moonflower or Jimson Weed, um, Hemlock, Yew, all of those are associated with her. And as a very important note, all of those things are also very poisonous. <laughs> so if you decide that you want to work with those in any way, make sure that you are very, very careful. Do not ingest. I hereby absolve myself of any responsibility if you choose to use it in an irresponsible way. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, but they are associated with Hecate. Um, a lot. I saw a post on Instagram not too long ago where someone took Asphodel and dried it and put it on an altar to her, which was really, really beautiful because it's really a very lovely flower. Um, some gemstones that are associated with Hecate are Jet, Smoky Quartz, Black Tourmaline, Onyx, and Garnet. You might, again, notice that all of those gemstones, if you know anything about crystals, kind of have something in common. Most of them are dark or black. Again, black is associated with death and transformation, which is kind of Hecate's big thing. Um, I added Garnet because I associate Garnet with her. Um, and um, black, but black, a lot of these stones are all things that are like for psychic protection and grounding and very earthy things. Allegiant says, would having a strong calling toward death work be connected to Hecate? I think it absolutely could be. Um, I, I, I saw a post on Facebook really, really recently that kind of connects to what you're asking. And the person said, you know, you know, I've been seeing the name of this, of this goddess. Actually, it might have even been Hecate. I think it was in a Hecate group that I'm in. You know, I've been seeing Hecate's name places and seeing pictures of her, and she's been coming up in conversation in really weird ways. Could that be a way that Hecate is calling to me? And absolutely it is. You know, that really kind of, like, defines what a calling is, is if she keeps popping up to you in different ways. Then yes, and, you know, and if you keep finding that you're encountering different symbols of hers, um, like the torches, like crossroads, like black dogs, like snakes or wolves or any of the things that are associated with her that could absolutely be a calling from or Hecate to that she, where she wants to work with you or that you might want to consider working with her and it might be useful to you and I would say if you know you're doing death work even apart from whether or not she's calling you I think that it, you would, might find a lot of value in researching and learning more about her because there she has so much to do with death death work in particular you know because she's not a goddess of death exactly she's a goddess of guiding people to death which is exactly what death work is so i think that you should absolutely research her more because i think that'd be really valuable for you um and then really really quickly um colors um this is really useful if you're looking for like altar cloths you might want to use again if you're joining me through so hashtag live into the comments it helps other people find us hashtag replay if you're watching on the replay um but colors associated with her purple um, wine, like, like that, like deep reddish purple color, more so death doula. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of what I assumed you meant. That's, um, you know, again, I would absolutely research her. I think that you would find her to be very, very fascinating. Um, um, dark red, like, so like blood red, she's, uh, there, are, you know, all these, um, like those Greek three goddesses associated with the Lucinian mysteries are very much associated with that sort of deep red pomegranate type color. And then of course, black, we talked about black already. So, so that is all I have on my official notes that I want to talk about today. Now that we're at the end, if you have any other questions, please feel free to throw them into the comments. If you have plans for this weekend for Samhain, I would love to hear about them. Um, I will tell you what mine are real quick while I'm, while we're, while I'm waiting for your comments. Um, and then I'll show you some of the things that I have here. I know I just showed you guys, hey, plants breathe, where you're talking about the guys Hecate today. We're actually kind of wrapping up. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been talking a lot, not dying, I swear. Um, talking about the guys Hecate, I'm actually wrapping up, so if you want to go back and rewatch after we're done, I think you might really enjoy it. Um, and I was just about to talk about my salad plans, and hoping that everyone else would share what their, their plans for the weekend were too. Um, so tonight I have a virtual Halloween party that I have been planning on my Facebook group, um, which is for the Witchy Mamas. It's called the Witchy Mama. If for some reason you would like to join and come see with see us and hang out with us and enjoy all the fun that we have in there, um, but we I I organized a gift exchange because trick or treating is kind of like a crapshoot this year. I'm trying to be funny, but there's that. Um, so. Yes, yeah, so we're doing um, live gift unwrapping for our, what we call this, I call it a spooky specter, um, like a secret Santa, but spooky. And so that'll be tonight. We're going to do some virtual games and do some little, and we'll have snacks. Uh, obviously, we'll have snacks. I don't know what everybody else is doing. 
Um, and then tomorrow, oh, Legion says they're going to be cleansing and blessing their home and keeping it low-key with movie marathon marathons. That sounds wonderfully quiet, which is a great thing because Samhain, if you're not familiar, is often, from the period from Samhain to Yule is often considered to be the dark uh, or the, the void of the year where the days are the shortest and the nights are the longest. It's generally considered to be a time of the year to sort of withdraw and focus on self-care and internal work and journey work and um, all those sorts of things. So I think that a, a low-key movie marathon where you relax at home sounds wonderful. Mibu says we're doing a big meal, setting out a plate for the ancestors and lighting a candle for them. And our sweet dog we lost the first of the month. I'm so sorry. Also have to save the house and property. Of course. Um, that sounds wonderful. I think a lot of people have lost a lot of people this year. So we have a lot of things to remember. Um, but tomorrow we're going to be doing a little thing with our family. My mother-in-law mentioned earlier about our family ritual. We're going to be doing a ritual at her house tomorrow night. Um, I don't know what's in the ritual because she wrote it, which is nice because now I didn't, I didn't have to organize or anything this for this holiday. <laughs> I did Maven. Um, well, I wrote Maven and then we did it at her house. Um, Mibu says sage. Sorry about that. Uh, where was I? Oh, we have to sage the whole house of property. That makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot more sense. I was like, save? Okay, sure. Why not? <laughs> I didn't even question it. Um, and then after that, so we're going to do the trick-or-treat thing with the kids. I think it might be a scavenger hunt. I don't know what she decided to do. Originally, we were hoping that other cousins might come, but all they, they all have their own plans. So it's going to be just my kids. Mind you, I have like three, three, three kids old enough to participate and then a little, little one who is, you know, too young to really get what's happening just yet. So three three kids for trick-or-treating so to speak we're gonna do something there just because you know we can't really go out out um and then we'll do the ritual after it's gonna be nice and then i hope on sunday that i'll get to do my own kind of solitary ish and i say ish because my kids might decide to join in um me if we says right it sounded like i've got some kind of spn level drama going on yeah it totally did but that's cool you know maybe you do what do i know <laughs> Um, so let me show you some more of my Hecate collection real quick because I know that we're going a little long. Um, I'm going to show you this first because it's one of my absolute favorite things. This is literally the only one that I have left. It is um, only two of a kind. The other one already sold. This is the last one. If you are interested in it, please send me a PM or of course you can find it on my website. If you're not already a member of my VIP list, you can go and sign up and you can get 20% off your first purchase. But it is this Hecate artwork that is in this beautiful vintage brass frame which I am in love with um, so this is um, so I mentioned the the term epithet epithet earlier uh, which is a describing word that people use for um, deities which specifically in Greek mythology usually um, to describe their characteristics or different things about them um, and this is Hecate Brimo so that's the the epithet is Brimo which means um, anger or righteous anger so she's a goddess of righteous anger um, so you can see here, she is hard to make out, but she has a snake wrapped around her waist and in her hand, the snake is a symbol of transformation. Um, this pattern that's in the edge of her scarf dress here um, is a leaf pattern. So she's also considered a healer and a midwife. So that's symbolic of that. Um, she has a triple moon in her belt. Um, and then this here, this in the background is intended to represent the new moon. She has a seven ray crown. She's, you know, angry looking. To me, she sort of represents the transformative power of of righteous anger. I feel like in our society that women are very much discouraged from, we're, we, I should say that we're, we're intended and expected to feel all emotions except for anger. And I think that this piece is sort of empower, in a way to empower women to experience that anger in a very sort of empowering way. And this is just a beautiful altarpiece. And you can see this is wiggling here. It's supposed to, it's actually two pieces, um, which makes it easy to ship. I like that. But I love this frame. I just think it's so beautiful. This really lovely detailing. So there's that. Um, this piece is fifty. These, this 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 whole this whole thing fifty dollars. Um, again, if you go and sign up for my list, it'll be less. Um, if you don't want to spend that much, but you love the artwork, you could find it as a print. These prints are eight dollars each. They're five by seven, and you can put it in your own frame, whatever makes you happy. And I showed you, and then I also have two more things, and then we'll call it a I'll call it a day. Um, I have my Hecate anointing oil that I blended personally. My kind of inspiration for this oil was what I what I kind of say is flowers in a graveyard, um, and that's what it smells like to me. It's kind of flowery, but also very earthy at the same time. 
which I think kind of taps into the whole idea of both life and death at the same time. So you kind of get both sides of the spectrum there. So, and um, I don't know how well you guys can see, but there is all kinds of pretty things floating in here. Um, there's gemstone chips. There's some herbs. Um, a lot of the herbs I use, although not all of these, because I've got lavender buds in here, and I don't, I don't wildcraft these. But like, there's juniper tips in here. Those are juniper tips that I um, wildcrafted and and um, forged on my own. Um, but this is really, really lovely, and it smells amazing. Um, and then, of course, finally, this is um, called a hag torch. So it is actually a mullein stock that has been dipped in beeswax and rolled in my Hecate Herbal Blend. And you can literally use this like a candle. You just light the top of it. There's no wick because the wick is actually the mullein that's inside. So you set it into a cauldron with sand or salt or something that will hold it up. And then you light it and this will burn for half hour to an hour. Um, you know, everybody's experience is different, so it's hard to say exactly, but the perfect length of time for a ritual. So if you're working with Hecate and your rituals, this can be a really lovely addition. So, um, and it comes with this nice little tag that kind of, um, gives you all the details that I just gave you and more about how to use it. So these are also on my website. I think that these are $20 each. It's terrible. I wrote the listings and I can't remember what's in them, but it's all on my website. And if you want to know more, or if you're like, oh, I really like that, but I'd really like to know the exact price because you weren't sure, um, by all means, send me an email. I hope that you all have a wonderful Samhain. I am going to wrap it up for today because I have to go get ready for our Spooky Spectre virtual Halloween party. Um, I hope that you have a blessed Samhain and a relaxing weekend. And I will see you guys next week. Next week, I'm going to be talking about secondhand magic. Um, so we'll talk about the power of thrifted magic. All right. Oh, Legion says, um, her daughter says I'm pretty. Thank you very much, very, very much. Tell her I think she's pretty. Take care, everybody, and bless be.